all right guys hello and welcome to my current bounty hunt shop monster review i've got to say it's really bad okay you've got like two saving grace no three saving graces i'd say and even so two of them aren't even going to be viable anymore so without further ado let's go over it there's huntivore as always um honestly the uh, bounty hunt fugitive hunters have been just getting worse and worse magic metal and magic weakness against so like he's basically like a Nishant the Great where he can just apply the weaknesses and do heavy damage with dots. Um, let me see if his trait saves him any. But personally, I don't think that monster is going to be anything good. Um, I'd look for Armor Gaming's monster review on it. Let's see. Because I feel like his trait is going to be his saving grace. Or it's going to show you. Like, he's going to have some irrelevant trait. And he's not even going to be good. Cold Blood, I'm guessing, or something. Yeah, so, no. He's really just Nishant the Great, but without the anticipation that made Nishant great. So, I'm going to say hard pass on that monster. And without further ado, let's get into what really matters. The free monsters from this bounty hunt shop. So, first, I think I'm going to go worst to best. So, if we're going worst to best, you have to start off with Usagon. This monster is an, is an absolute abomination. And it isn't just because they're in the book and it's their trait. This monster has like a single stun, nothing else. Uh, like a uh, hellfire to one and then stun to one nothing else stamina removal plus stun nothing else this monster is like insanely bad like it's offensively bad like when they made this a maze monster i knew they were going to start releasing just trash maze monsters from then on and then they just completely removed maze monsters because you know whenever they want to remove an event they just make the monster bad worse and worse until you don't even miss it and this was one of those he is just awful. Get him for collection purposes and collection purposes only. Um, yeah, he really has no viability in any category. Even being in the Galactic Era doesn't save him with their stats or their relics. Um, even for beginner standards, I, 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 I don't want to dog on him all day, but I'm just going to say absolute no. Then it's a tie between Ogneronk or Ogneronk, whatever, and Hardnut Gorilla. Because Hardnut Gorilla... He can apply Mega Taunt to himself, and he does have a Mega Stun to all enemies. No, Mega Stun to one enemy. He has a Stun to one enemy, and he can apply Mega Taunt. He's just like the uh, Orkadi from the Metro era, where he's just an attacker who can also just apply Mega Taunt, but his skills don't revolve around being a tank. So it's really weird. Um, but in that sense, at least if you really cared, you could give him like all team speed, maybe apply Mega Taunt. But I can't see any situation where you'd actually go through the effort to do that. Rather than just using a Megaton monster. So, I'm going to say hard pass on this one too. As always, get everybody for collection purposes. You fill out the books really easily. And these um, bounty hunt events are the best way to fill it out. Like, look, I don't have Ram. And he's one monster I don't know how I would ever get outside of bounty hunt. So always get everyone so that you can complete the books for massive rewards. But there are some monsters who you just want to get and you don't want to rank them up at all because you are never going to use them. Hardna Gorilla is one of those guys, sadly. And so is Ognarok. His whole gimmick is percentage life removal. He has a move that can like remove 25% of life. Um, I believe like zero cooldown or something. Like here, let me show you his skill set because it is quite unique. But it's that's all it is. It's unique, not good. Like, any other percentage life removal monster will do a lot better. So, nature, or is it just metal? Where are you? Hold on, is he not in the Blossom Air? Ognarok, yeah. So, here we go. Do do do. Yeah, I have him in my vault. That always is a good sign that a monster is not going to be impressive. Um, so, he has, look quicksand he has heavy he has 30 percent life removal okay so that was his gimmick he removes a percentage of life and heals it so he can spam between 30 percent life removal and 20 percent life removal on a low cooldown low stamina and you know that's 50 percent of your life taken in two turns but the problem is a relic can heal you by much more than that much quicker so then you want to rely on his damage output but even that isn't as impressive even those you know metal and earth damage is pretty good in the meta right now um he's really just not a monster worth investing in he's just a bland attacker a bland raw damage attacker and as i always say and as it shows more relevant now than ever 
your raw damage gets so outdated so quickly that you have to have even more gimmicks. And removing 50% while healing it is a nifty gimmick, but his execution of it just isn't good enough. So I'm going to say pass on Ognorok, but get everyone for collection. Then we have Ram. The way I see him, he's really just... Uh, if anyone remembers Rawrus, I love that monster. He's Rawrus without the pause of effect removal, which is what made Rawrus so OP. Um, because he can do, you know, cooldown to one, nanovirus to one extra turn. He can do, um, I think it's just cooldown. I remember him having some time stop though. But his real big thing is cooldown and nanovirus, which is really quite good. Because, you know, you'll do the cooldown and nanovirus, boom. They can't attack you with any moves that have a cooldown higher than zero. The nanovirus prevents them from, you know, applying immunities, triple damage, anything like that. And then you can deny them. And then once the denial runs out and the nanovirus blocks them from having the immunity, you can deny them again. So it's basically just a nerfed version of Rarus with slightly better stats. But even then, the relics of the Blossom era do not hold a candle to the relics of the uh, Doomsday era. So I'm going to say pass on Ram. He's not bad, honestly. I think for a beginner, he'd be, you know, a nice little denier. But I'm not going to suggest you get him over anyone else on this list. Um, but yeah, from worst to best so far, it's definitely Usagon, Hardnut Gorilla, Ognoronk, then Ram. Then we finally get into the last few saving graces. The last three are actually pretty good, I happen to like. So first, I'm going to say Metrogon. Uh, he used to also be a fugitive, bounty hunt, exclusive hater, whatever. Um, so yeah, he's a dragon hater in the dragon books. He is just like, oh my god. In the galactic era, they were just putting hater after hater. Like, they released Nephil Slayer, who's a underworld, or like an undead monster, who hates undead monsters. This is a dragon monster who hates dragon monsters. So he's a rare good pick in the dragon's book with immune to control as a trait ooh, and um haters are also a trait you know so i think this monster is actually quite good being immune to co control and a dragon hater in the dragon book and by the way guys the dragon book is like severely lacking in good picks it is one of the worst books right out right now and the few good picks are really strong he is one of the most powerful picks in that book in my opinion his damage isn't that high but his trait is amazing. Status caster, magic weakness, tough, and immune to control. Although you do have to get him to like rank 5 for these two. Even at rank 3, immune to control and tough. This is a really good dragon hater pick. No, a dragon restriction cho choice. So I'm going to say this is a great monster. Definitely want to pick him up. Definitely want to try and get him to like at least rank 1. Because I think you might want to use this monster in war. A rare good dragon restrictions monster immune to control is a trait but with all that said he does rely on raw damage and raw damage can only get you so far in the meta he's basically like chieftain alarok but with better stats and better relics no better talents so whether you get him you know i think he's just a great pick for the dragon restriction alone but that alone might not be enough for you still i think he's a monster who's worth investing in slightly and then I got to suggest Siokara. I absolutely love this monster. It was one of those like sleeper hits where it's a monster who you don't expect to be as good as they are. She's got true vision as a trait, which is one of my favorite traits for any denier to have. So her, you know, AOE freeze plus drowned almost never misses. She has the really good cleanse plus denial. Even though it's only a single, it's still really effective against Megaton monsters, monsters with evasion and monsters with pierce if you want to shut them down. Um, She's got a move that cleanses and then applies healing to your entire team, which I've seen this countless times in War. You'll possess her and she'll do that move and it'll cleanse off of herself and then apply like healing to your entire team. It's so broken. So, and then she's got, you know, an AoE team cleanse. She's got an AoE enemy cleanse. This is a monster who's got it all. And then, you know, Doomsday era talents are really good. Her relics are pretty good too. I'd say she is a great pick for War. One of the few good winter book monsters and definitely one of your best sea monster picks so i say get this monster invest in her i think seal car is really good then again she is not the best she will only really just like metragon she'll only really be good because of her restrictions but outside of that she is not a really op monster but i think she's viable 
So I'd say get her. She's pretty fun to use. I love the design. It's so adorable, bro. But yeah, definitely Metragon, then Siokara. Or the other way around. Or it's Metaragon. I'm just going to call him Metragon. It's too far gone now. Um, but yeah, he's really good. And she is really good for their own separate restrictions. And in that sense, they're worth it to invest in. But then at the very end, we have Prospera the Great. I really like this monster. Um, I thought he had anticipation and self-buffing. But that's not even... No, I thought he had, like, immune to torture, but apparently he has anticipation, which is incredibly powerful. So what this monster does is he has anticipation for the trait, and he has moves that will attack and then buff his damage. So he's not just a raw damage attacker. As I say, those go outdated really quickly. But an anticipation monster, so they'll get as many turns as your enemies get. But if they try any infinite extra turns, he'll get those turns too. So that is an incredibly powerful mechanic, to be able to buff your attacks and instant kill. Because, like, let's say, like, um, an anticipation monster like um, Nishant the Great, he can only be so strong when he gets his infinite extra turns in, right? Because anticipation will trigger when they do their attacks. But with this monster, he can increase his damage output without even having to have a buff monster. So he has, like, an AoE that will give him three random buffs, and that always leads him into being able to do, like, an instant kill. And that is devastatingly powerful. Um, just an anticipation monster is good in general because we are really lacking in that category and we really need monsters in that category because the amount of monsters with infinite extra turns who are just running the meta is crazy. So he's definitely going to be one of your better war picks too as there's not too many good earth attackers. So an earth attacker with anticipation and self buffing, I've got to say, is one of the best monsters you could have on your arsenal. So definitely get this monster and definitely invest in him. I'm really happy that he's the what do you call it, spotlight monster, where you'll get his cells just for attacking the fugitive, because he is definitely the monster you want at the highest rank. So, with all that being said, I'll go over the order you want to get them one last time, from best to worst. Get Prospero first, and then Metragon. They are both incredibly powerful, but Prospero is definitely the best on this list. He used to be the $50 monster, and he was one of the rare $50 monsters that you might actually consider getting. Then Metaragon. You know, immune to control, great against its own type of monsters, great against other dragons like Serpentex. He is a Serpentex killer with that dragon hater because Serpentex is a dragon. So really good monster. Then get Siokara. You know, he's a really good denier. She's super viable in the winter book. And she's very versatile on the battlefield. She can cleanse and heal. She can deny with true vision so she doesn't miss. She can cleanse and deny. Uh, she can, you know, add dots. You know, she's a really good monster. Then the rest of the monsters on the list... Usagon, Hardna, Gorilla, Ram, and um, what's your name? Ognarok. Those monsters you can get in any order you want because you're not going to use any of them. Sh short of being a noob. Now, as always, I'm going to say get every single monster because, you know, for collection purposes, fill out a book. Like, Ram is going to complete a book for me once I, no, a page of a book, and that is going to give me so many rewards. So, as I said, always get every single monster, put special investment into Matargon. Seal Kara, but only after you invest in Prospero the Great, because he is the only one who you are really going to use for a while after this. And with all that being said, thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please leave a like on the video. It helps me a lot. It helps the video and the algorithm, and it can get this video out to other people who would find this video helpful too. And I hope you, I really hope you enjoyed because I love making this kind of content for you guys. Leave a comment. Did you um do you agree with the order that I rank these guys? Do you think any person? is better or worse than I made them sound? And who are you going to invest in heavier? Metaragon or Siokara? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions. And subscribe to join the Crab Army. We are about to overtake Avrigo, one of my best friends that I made from YouTube here, in subscribers, and I'd be really proud of that. So, guys, let's keep growing the Crab Army. Sorry it's been four days since my last video, but I've been trying to record this Volcanics monster review, and it has been killing me. Because it is just it's so hard to record now. Because I recorded the entire thing. It was an amazing video. Then it all glitched out. And I've been trying to re-record it. So don't worry guys. It's the weekend. I'm going to get this content back to you guys. And then be back on the regular. So subscribe to join the Crab Army. We are just going to keep growing. And I'm going to keep making consistent content. Thank you all so much for watching this far. That is all the support that I need. It means the world to me. I hope you enjoyed. Hope you found it helpful. I hope you have a great day. And I hope to see you in the next one. That's about it. Your favorite Omni's Crab. Signing out. And wishing you a happy hunting.